Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, where today we are building a habitat with underwater viewing for the giant otter. Before we start that, I had a load of comments last week concerned for the safety of our capuchins. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you that the ropes they climb on take them between the caiman habitats, not over them. They are perfectly safe. They've even got a security camera. All right, what we're we building for the giant otters then. So they're going to have a massive naturalistic habitat with underwater viewing and then obviously viewing above the water as well and it's going to be at the end of the river here on this curve so the first thing we need to do is turn this part of the river into a separate piece of water so that we can get some viewing in so at the moment this whole sort of fake river is all one water body and we need to turn it into two here so we can get different barriers in. At the moment, it's all held up by terrain and we want some glass barriers around the sides so we can get the underwater viewing in. So firstly, I'm gonna cover the pieces of glass here with an actual glass barrier so we can get the water back in here. Looking good. And then here, we'll start turning the null barriers that this water is in into proper glass barriers for the viewing window. So the river here is looking exactly the same as it was before, which is the, the entire point really. And in order to get an underwater viewing in, we're going to need to lower the path so that the guests go below the level of the water. We'll get rid of that temporary fence there. And oh mama, it's time for Franchise Masters already. So today's tip is about building for diving animals. So the way I work out how deep to get the water is to simply take a wall piece that is the same height as the animal's diving requirement, sink it just below the surface of the terrain, and then move it over to where you want the water. Then you just dig out the terrain so that you can now see the bottom of the wall piece like we are going to do here and that lets you know that the water is going to be exactly the right height for them to dive in without being too ridiculous. I'm going to leave a bit of space in this one here because we're going to be lining the bottom of the river with uh, some branches that look really cool later on in the video. I'm going to do a short I think that shows you the diving requirements for each animal but it's always either two, three or four meters. For the giant otters and the Asian small clawed otters it is two meters. And now we've got the right depth, we'll use the flattened brush to paint the river back in, get it all to the correct depth, and then move on to the barriers. So these null barriers here are going to become glass to hold the water in. And where we've dug out the terrain there, we can get the path in at the correct height. And we'll join them together so we've got two massive panes of glass, so that there's really good viewing that isn't interrupted. Um, and then we will sort out this bit of terrain here and start putting the path in. So we just use the control key to place it down without joining up. Uh, needs to do a bit more dig in there to get that bit in. That should be enough. Let's see, yep, there we go. And then we'll smooth that out and join it up in a second. So that's the basic mechanics of the habitat done. Now we need to start thinking about what it's going to look like and where the otters are going to go. So I'm going to put a little island of rock and um, sort of pond weeds in here, which is going to encourage the otters to stay down this end of the habitat when they're above the water. And then we're going to use some more of Zoov's mud walls to make the actual walls for the habitat. So you can see I've joined the paths up there and we'll be using these walls again because obviously I want the whole area to have a continuity in terms of the way it looks. And these are great pieces to do that with. And we'll move these all the way along here and just get a nice smooth sort of descent for the path. And this part of the path here with still got the railings on it. That is going to be one of the main viewing points. This is where you're going to see the otters above the water. And we're going to fill this end of it with enrichment items to make sure they spend a lot of time over here. And then as you walk round, we're on the other side now and you've got the big glass viewing windows where you're going to be able to see them underwater. And later on, we're going to carve out a little peep through in these mud walls so that um, people can get a little glimpse of them sort of coming from the land to the water, if that makes sense. I wasn't really happy with how the back of these rock walls look and you can see the back of them from the first viewing point that we just saw. So I'm basically cloning them, spinning them and copying them onto the back of themselves to cover up the bits I didn't like. And then we're going to use some of the aquatic rocks to meld them nicely into the path. So it's not just a vertical wall suddenly hitting a horizontal path. It's going to look nice and um, sort of like a smooth transition. 
we'll copy some more of the mud walls down on top of these rocks as well and just get a really smooth transition going on there that looks really attractive. I'm just sort of plonking these down with the randomizer turned on at the moment and then we'll sync them in and make sure that they're not projecting into the path and um, becoming a trip hazard or anything like that. And we'll just keep copying these till we get up to the path with the railings on it and then we'll do something a bit different up there to join it on nicely. I'm using the wood chipping path here as a contrast to the wood planks that the rest of the path is made of. I want that path to look like a, a real bridge above the river and then this will be more of a sort of a standard path. And then we're gonna copy loads of the strangler fig roots in like we did last week, but I'm really gonna to go to town on them here. Um, I want this wall to look really cool because it's quite a long wall to get people round to here. I don't want it to be boring. So we're gonna get loads of these in and some foliage and stuff like that. And then later on, we're gonna put a big giant otter sign on there. Um, that's not actually in the video. You guys have seen me place uh, text down a hell of a lot. Um, so you know what the drill is there, but it just really brings this sort of bit of wall to life. And I get so many of these um, strangler fig roots in. It's almost got a sort of HR Giga kind of look to it, which I really like. I don't want to go too far, turn it into a horror film, but um, yeah, really pleased with how that wall looks in the end. And then we're gonna do a different wall here. We're gonna do a concrete wall to keep the water in or, or make it look like it's keeping the water in rather than just the mud walls here. So playing around with a few different tops for it until I get one I'm happy with. This is just the concrete uh, pillar, I think it's called. Um, that looks really nice. So we'll copy that all the way around as you can see here and just make it look more realistic. And then what I wanted for the river is to get a flooded forest look uh, if you've seen my Planet Wild series, you know I love a flooded forest. It's probably my favorite environment. Um, and I wanted to do that here. Um, kind of hard to build one in a zoo. Normally you see them indoors in aquariums and things like that, where it's really easy to do because you just make sort of fake tree trunks, which is not hard. And then they end in the ceiling and you don't need any foliage or anything like that. But obviously it's a lot harder to do that outside. So we're gonna make another fake tree here. I didn't want to use the ones I used for the capuchins when it's something different. so. We're going to cover this one with um, vines um, and moss and things like that. Ivy, just make it look a bit more natural, but it definitely needs to look like a fake tree that has had stuff added to it to make it more attractive rather than trying to make it look like a real tree. And once I get this right and I'm happy with it, we'll copy this around the load. And then we'll also put some of the dead trees in as well, because I figure they are not hard to come by and you could probably put those into the water, but actually growing trees you know underwater uh, probably beyond um, the budget of most zoos or, or even just the common sense of most zoos so we're not going to have any real trees in here um, but once it's all done I think it looks really cool and when you look through the underwater viewing windows it really does evoke a flooded forest which is a classic Amazonian environment and very suitable for the otters that we're going to have in here that's the ivy just have this sort of poking out so bits of it are inside the tree and bits of it are outside the tree. That looks um, really good when it's done. And once I finish that, I'll get some more of the strangler fig roots in because you can't have too many of them. Big thank you to all the amazing comments I've had giving me suggestions for improvements and other ideas for this Amazonian area. I've had some great ones from Salamanders, uh, Black Hoof, PS Vision Gaming. I'm going to be incorporating a load of those ideas which you will see when we take a tour of the finished area once we've got the rest of the habitats done here and I'll show you all the, the backstages and stuff like that once it's all complete. This is the fake trees pretty much done now. We'll put a few real ones in and then we're gonna start tidying up this viewing window. So I don't want the glass to just sort of magically disappear into the mud walls. So we're gonna get some concrete, some metal and things like that to attach the glass. And then I'm gonna use one of the fence posts. It's just a really thin piece and I thought it'd look good, like the sort of rubber surrounds that you get on glass to make sure it's watertight when it joins uh, into a wall or anything like that. And then we'll use some of these Australian logs to frame the glass itself so it's not just bare glass. Spin them round and join them up so they join together seamlessly and it looks like one long piece. And then when I'm happy with it, we'll just join it together 
and then really quickly copy it all the way across the top of the viewing window. And that just ties it together, uh, makes it look a lot more attractive. Um, we'll probably drop some vines on it as well so that it's got a bit more of a visual pop to it at each end, just using a few different vine pieces. And then we will move on and take care of the riverbed. So I came up with an idea for this that I was really happy with. We're basically gonna take this piece of concrete and completely cover it in strangler fig roots and just sink these in. I don't even know how many I put in here, a lot and just get a really sort of random looking assortment of them. Like you might see uh, the bed of a river, all these branches and logs and trees and stuff that have fallen into or decayed in the flooded forest. Kind of like we did with the waterfall. We're gonna build it all on this concrete piece. A, so there's a bit of concrete poking through to make it realistic. because obviously this isn't really a river. And then uh, secondly, to enable us to place it all the way around the riverbed really easily, because it'll be on a grid. But we just keep using loads of different types of the strangler fig roots and just trying to make it look as gnarly and random as possible uh, just keep building it up and building it up until we get something that we're happy with and once we've got this one piece completely covered then we can just copy paste this all the way around the bottom of the river and when it's done i think it looks really cool let's get copying then so we're gonna slide it in to the water and then we'll get it at just the right height so the concrete's just peeking through Make sure the roots aren't coming out too far and they stay within the river. And then by selecting it, when we've still got the group selected, we can then just copy and paste it round on the grid really easily and cover the whole bottom of the river with this piece. And uh, it just gives it this really random look. I shifted a few of the pieces manually as well, just to make sure uh, you couldn't see any sort of straight lines or anything like that. And the habitat is coming along really nicely. That's pretty much the underwater side of things done. Really like how this area is shaping up. But as you can see here, the top of the water and the land is pretty bare. So let's get that filled in now. We'll get the top of the water done first using these Amazonian water lilies, which are such an impressive flower. But I'm also gonna use some of the other water lilies. I think it's called the common water lily, if I recall correctly, these ones here because they've got the roots that dangle down in the water, which is great for when you're looking through the underwater viewing window, really fills in the space and makes it look more dynamic when you've got stuff near the surface as well as on the bottom and then with the trees uh, growing up through it as well. And then we'll put this huge log, which is normally way too big for me to bother using, but it actually works pretty nicely in this area here when you put it to the back. Uh, we'll put some little bird stickers on the window to make sure that uh, or to try and prevent birds from flying into the glass like they do in real zoos. This is a little workshop item made by Romana Palacios. I think it's just a few of the commas. And then we'll move on to the land and start filling it in with rocks just so the tops of the rock are poking through the ground so it looks like little pebbles. And then we're going to go absolutely crazy with the uh, giant rhubarb plants. I love these plants. Use them a lot in this area. Uh, they're not just appropriate for the area, but they've just got this, this foliage just gives you a sort of good generic tropical kind of feel. I'm actually just gonna stack a load of them together to make it look like one giant plant. Just kind of looks like a big tropical plant in the background. We're gonna have a shelter in front of this for the otters. Uh, I'm not gonna show building that, um, mainly because I just copy and pasted the shelter for the capybara. No need to go crazy making another shelter when you've already got one that's really appropriate. Um, we'll put a few palms in, sink some of them into the ground, um, join some of them together and just get some nice custom plants that won't look exactly the same as uh, everybody else's. We'll build a little garden in the middle of the viewing windows here, just with loads of randomly placed spun around rocks and then some mulch and a few plants just so the middle of the viewing area where you've got the sign for the otters and all the education looks a lot more attractive and it helps to break it in half and bring some variety to the build as well and then it's on to the final part of the build which is the little peek through that i mentioned at the start so on this wall here on the curve in the path we're going to start removing bits of the mud wall bits of all the foliage and the roots and revealing some of the glass that's underneath it. We'll just keep chipping away at it and moving things around until we get a really nice looking viewport. And then we'll put this stone arch in and position this in place once we get it colored right. That really sort of brings it together and makes it look natural and man-made at the same time, which is the, uh, the look that I'm going for. Uh, and that'll give the guests a little glimpse into the habitat and give them a preview of the otters before they get to the underwater viewing window. Speaking of the otters, it's time to bring them in. There's the sign that I mentioned. I really like that with the uh, letters copied behind themselves. And here's the otters. 
We've got one of them in from Tecton Zoo, and then the little babies as well, and then I've bought a new male. This viewing window I'm really happy with. I spent a lot of time on this, but I think it was definitely worth it. This is the, the whole habitat with an overview. And this is the little peek through that we just built. It's an absolutely huge habitat. They've got so much room in here. It's actually above their space requirements, which is unusual for franchise mode. And how cute the little babies look sleeping in their shelter. This is where we started today. And this is where we finished. Next week, we're going to be building a potentially even bigger habitat for the Jaguar. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you then.